Hello everyone, um, it is Friday morning and I'm coming to you post port procedure um, and pick removal. Um, I'm happy to report that they did both. They put the port in and they took the pick out, which was fantastic. And not only did they do that, but they used the pick as my IV line. So there was some question um, when I got there whether they were going to need to pull the pick before they would be able to place the port because it was going into the same um, vein. Um, and if that was the case, then they were obviously going to need to place um, a regular peripheral IV. But the nurse talked with the radiologist who was going to be doing the procedure and said, no, they can use the pick line and that's fine and that they would also be able to pull it at the end. So that was like the best of both worlds. Um, so it was just really great, like saved the extra hassle of having to figure out how on earth I was going to get the pick line removed. Um, so, da 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 da, you can't really see, unfortunately. Wow, it's really glary. So there's, I just have a band aid there. Um, and I wanted to be able to see them taking it out, like, I've had picks before, I've watched them being removed, like, it's not like it's a big thing, and, and, um, seeing it removed would be a big deal, but, um, like, I kind of wanted to see it happen, but I was still all draped and everything, and had my, my head to the side, and they wouldn't let me, um, look over, so, whatever, it's fine, <laughs> um, so yeah, so everything went really well. Um, I went, I got to the hospital yesterday morning at 8.30, um, couldn't eat, I mean obviously couldn't eat because of the um, anesthesia, the sedation and everything, um, was able to drink until about 9 because the procedure was actually supposed to happen at 11, they were running late and everything, but anyway so I got there um, and they were very coordinated with everything, like they knew I needed to have blood work done for the port um, placement, um, I needed to have the ultrasound done, and I needed to have the port uh, placed. Uh, so they were very coordinated with it all, and it was all happening in the same department. Um, so they did, they pulled me for the blood work first, and then had me go do the ultrasound, and the ultrasound was actually at both of my arms, which was a little bit tricky because of the pick line being there, but she managed to work around it. And it was actually kind of cool um, to be able to see, like, you could see the pick line, um, when she was at a certain part of my arm, um, and she actually said which vein or artery or whatever the pick line was in, I forget which one she said, um, and they had it set up so that when I was facing away from her, and she was on my right arm and stuff, and she needed me to be facing away from her, there was a, um, there was a monitor up on the um, wall so that I could see exactly what she was seeing, which was cool. I had never been to an ultrasound where that was the case. It was always like, I was always craning my neck around trying to see their screen. Um, so that was neat. Um, so then after that, I ended up waiting like an hour and a half, um, and started thinking that they had maybe forgotten about me or like what had happened. That they didn't know that I was done with the ultrasound. Um, so I went and checked with the, the woman that I had checked in with. She called up and, she, and found out that, like, no, they were just running late and they were coming to get me. So, um, so they came and got me and the nurse was super nice. Um, I had talked with her on the phone, um, when I called to pre-register on Tuesday. Um, I had a question, so I, I got transferred around to interventional radiology and left a message and she called me back to answer my questions because on my paperwork... <clears throat> it didn't say getting that I was getting a port cath place. It said I was getting a bass catheter, which I then looked up online and was like, um, that doesn't sound like what I'm supposed to be getting. So, um, so anyway, oh, sorry, was, sorry about that. Um, <laughs> I was getting a shipment of medicine that I forgot about. Um, now I have to remember where I was when I was talking about. Um, so anyway, so the nurse called me back on Tuesday and we talked and um, she was really nice and um, you know was asking questions about my um, my IV stuff and 
um, like just from what she knew of what I get IV and, um, and my case and everything, she had kind of determined that um, it would be best for me to get a double lumen port. Um, so it was like, so this whole experience of getting a port placed at this hospital, because all of my previous ports have been placed at the same hospital, at the same other hospital down by my parents. Um, and it's been fine, and like, whatever, it's been placed, the same surgeon has placed all of them, they've all been done in the OR, and like, they've been fine. But the experience at this hospital has just been, like, so different, and so much better, that I wish that I had known this a while ago, um, because, like, I would be, I would have been going to this hospital, you know... It's just it's just really nice now to know that this hospital is so much easier to deal with. Or not necessarily easier to deal with, but just um, nicer. Um, anyway. So, so anyway, so I ended up having the same nurse that I had talked to on Tuesday, which was really great. And she apparently had spent time, like, looking over my um, information. And, I mean, there was information there from when I was in the hospital, when I was inpatient there in October, and, um, so she really knew stuff about me, which was really nice, um, and I guess the radiologist who was placing the port had also read some stuff, read some of the stuff about me, and, um, like, she was just really sweet, and, um, and it was just a really good experience, um, and she was the one in charge of doing the sedation medications, um, and, she, like, it was great. I got a good amount of, of sedation, um, but it was really tailored to how much I needed. Like, there was, like, she gave me enough so that I was kind of out of it and had my eyes closed for a lot of the time, I think. And then when I would, like, open my eyes and look up at her, she'd be like, you want some more? <laughs> and, you know, I would, I would say, yeah, or yes or no, or whatever. Um, so that was really good. So it was just overall a really positive experience. Um, and she explained everything really well beforehand, um, went over everything really thoroughly, um, so that was all great. Um, so, what I'm left with now, I've never had this before. This is, like, I know that other people have had this, where, like, they have to go in to your neck a little bit, um, and she said it was just, like, a puncture, it wasn't really, like, a incision, um, but, yeah, so... I've never had that before. Um, so that's really the only thing that's different about this port um, placement. So, and they left me access, which, like, was no issue at all. With my last port placement, I had to kind of fight them to leave me accessed. Um, the port that I had placed in July. Um, which was just kind of ridiculous to have to fight them for that. Um, but, like, the nurses didn't want to do it. And I think this is just kind of the difference between doing it in the OR and doing it in interventional radiology. They're just much more willing to do these kinds of things. So anyway, so here is the new port, if you can see it. I'm not sure if you can. Um, so that's the whole shebang. Um, so this gauze is covering up the incision, which of course is kind of tender. Um, the worst... The worst part right now is that, like, my neck is really tight, um, and, like, I can sit fine like this, I can lie down okay, but when I'm standing up, it really pulls at it, um, and that's kind of hard. It's, it's hard sometimes to take deep breaths, it's hard to yawn, um, stuff like that, but it's not too bad, I'm just taking over-the-counter, I mean, I don't have any prescription pain stuff, so it's just over-the-counter stuff, um, Tylenol or Motrin. Um, what else was I going to say? Oh, and it's a power port. So I've, this is my fourth port, which is a little bit, um, sad and frustrating to think that this is my fourth port, but this is my fourth port. All of my ports have been slightly different. Um, so my first port was just a plain old non-power single lumen port, which was a great port, like, it, it was a wonderful port, it lasted me almost four and a half years, um, I never had issues with it, 
it always gave me a great blood return. Like, it was just, it was a great port. It was just a great port. Um, my second port was a non-power double lumen port, which was also a good port. I had some issues with it giving blood return, though. It didn't like to give blood return, especially one of one of the lumens, like, after a month, quit giving blood return completely, pretty much, and the other lumen was, like, every once in a while it would give a blood return. Um, my third port, which I had, oh, my second port I had for almost two and a half years. My third port, which I had for, like, three months, <laughs> I had it placed in July and had it removed in October of this past year, um, was a single lumen power port, and that one was fine. I didn't really have major issues with it. Um, it that's my, the only one that I had placed on the left side, um, which I'm a little bit upset now that I let them scar up the left side of my chest for a port that only lasted me three months, but, um, it was totally, I mean, it was my decision that the surgeon kind of didn't want to scar up the left side of my chest, and I was like, no, I, I want this port, so I really can only kick myself for that. Um, so that was a single lumen power port, and then this port is a double lumen power port, so I've had kind of a big range of of different kinds of ports. Um, and we're hoping, knock on wood, that this one is going to last a really long time. Um, when we were in the waiting room, I was telling Eric to think like nice long thoughts, like five years or until I don't need it anymore, um, would be really good. So, um, yeah. So we're hoping that this is a nice, has a nice long life. Um, I mean, it would be really, it would be really good if we could get to the point where I'm not needing all of this IV stuff every day, but, um, I don't see that happening really anytime soon, so for now, I'll just settle for, you know, having a port rather than a pick line, and, um, being back to my normal, which is, is good, um, and I wanted to really quickly, so non-medical related, um, I wanted to, I said that I was going to show our cake toppers. So I'm going to show you our cake toppers, which are super cute. Um, there they are, the penguin bride and groom. She has a veil, if you can see that. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, she has a veil. So those are our cake toppers. Um, and we had them custom made basically like to our specifications like we got to choose the type of flower between roses and daisies we got to choose what color the flowers and the tie and the top hat and stuff were and we got to choose whether he had a um, necktie or a bow tie and uh, what type of veil she had and stuff like that um and it's a woman we got him from etsy off of etsy um which is a fantastic site um and they're made they were made by a woman in the netherlands um, and I'll, I'll post a link to her store, um, and she has, like, a ton of different animals, and she does basically all, mostly cake toppers, um, and, like, just a whole slew of different kinds of animals, um, in different sizes and stuff, and, um, and they're made out of polymer clay, so they're gonna last a really long time, so, yeah, um, so I'm gonna get back to resting a bit, um, I tried to eat something this morning, and it's sitting okay on my stomach, but making me kind of nauseous. So, um, yeah, I'm going to go back to resting and try to try to sleep a bit more. And uh, hope that this soreness and pain and stuff goes away quickly. Um, and uh, hope you're all having a good week. Um, and I, I have not necessarily been keeping up with everyone's videos as well as I would like, so maybe today's going to be a good day for me to, um, you know, watch a lot of those since I'm going to be here in bed. I have my pillow pet pals with me. This is Stamford the ladybug from, um, I got him from my soon-to-be mother-in-law is a weird thing to think, um, when I was, uh, in the hospital in June, 
so it's Stanford. And then my computer is actually on top of, um, this is Penelope that I got from the family that I, that I nannied for. Um, they gave her to me for my birthday. She actually has a little bit of a hole in her side that maybe I should sew up today. Um, but she was with me through my hospital stay in October. So they've both, they've both seen me through hospital stuff and they're, uh, they're going to be here with me today while I recover from this. Okay, <laughs> so I'm going to go now. Um, hope you're all having a good day and I'm thinking of you all. Um, and I will talk to you soon. Alright, bye.